everybody, I am that nursing prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the medication lithium. So let's get into it. So how does it work? So it works on our central nervous system. It is used to treat bipolar. So specifically, it can be used during a manic episode or as like maintenance treatment to prevent these manic episodes in our patients. Um, it can cause serotonin receptor blockage, decreases neuronal atrophy, and also increases neuronal growth. So that's really good. That's a good positive about it. And it is very strongly influenced by the amount of sodium in our body. So sodium, if we don't remember, affects mania. So it affects these exacerbations of mania. So sodium and lithium kind of go hand in hand when they work together in the body. And one other important thing I wanted to point out about this medication is it is a pregnancy category D. So this is dangerous to take during pregnancy. This is something that a pregnant woman would talk about with the doctor to determine like, okay, does the benefit outweigh the risk? Because there are known um, defects that can happen as a result of this medication. A helpful mnemonic to get you to remember the signs and symptoms of the lithium side effects, because there are quite a few side effects to this medication is lithiums. So L stands for loss of appetite. I is for increased urination. This is a big one. So a big side effect is people frequently having to go to the restroom. And this is something that you want to talk about with the physician because they might need to decrease the frequency or the amount of your dose because that's going to help with that. So increased urination, that's a big one. Issues with your vision. So some people report things like blurry vision or having a hard time seeing as a result of this medication. T is for thirst. So you're going to be very thirsty, dry mouth. That's a big side effect of this one. So thirst and then tremors. Hypothyroidism. So I do actually have a whole other video on hypothyroidism. I'll put it in the description below if you want to check that out. But a lot of those symptoms of hypothyroidism can come about as a result of a lithium side effect. So hypothyroidism, hair loss or hair thinning, interactions. So it has a lot of interactions with a lot of different medications. So that's kind of a big downside to this medication. Use for upset stomach, so things like nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. N is for muscle weakness. And then S is for skin issues, things like acne, psoriasis, rashes. Those can occur as a side effect of lithium. Lithium does have a lot of medication interactions, more than I even put on this board. Um, but I decided to put ones that are like major ones, stuff that you're more likely to see. So this is the, like the big stuff. So it can interact with things like fentanyl, tramadol, St. John's wort, which is an over-the-counter like herbal supplement your patient might be on. So it's important to ask if they're taking any vitamins or herbal supplements as well. NAOIs, antidepressants, antipsychotics, diuretics because of the effect of salt, right, and how it can get more salt out of your body, which can lead to lithium toxicity. NSAIDs, again, common over-the-counter pain relievers, so you need to educate your patients about this. And then anticholinergics. So these are some of the main types of medications that it can have an effect on. And usually what we're talking about here is toxicity. One type of um, interaction that can occur with some of these meds is it can cause something called serotonin syndrome. And I briefly wanted to mention that. In the beginning of the video, I talked about how lithium works on the body and how it affects serotonin. So sometimes it has this negative reaction and something called serotonin syndrome occurs. So some side effects of that to watch out for include agitation, fever, hallucinations, a fast heart rate, twitching of the muscles or overall like muscle weakness, and then loss of coordination. When it comes to nursing interventions, this medication has a lot of patient education. So we want to tell them to take it with meals to avoid that side effect of GI upset, so that nausea, vomiting. 
Avoid dehydration. So very, very important that our patients drink lots of fluids and that we do strict INO on our patients. This is contraindicated for breastfeeding people, so you are not allowed to breastfeed while taking this medication. It's not safe for the baby. We need to monitor a lot of labs. So we need to monitor their CBCs, their electrolytes, their kidney tests, their thyroid tests. Their lithium level needs to be taken within five days after they first start treatment. Um, and then every one to three months after that, depending, seeing how they're going, um, checking for like therapeutic range. The thing about this medication is it has a very narrow range. So it's very important that our patients are not becoming toxic. Special considerations for this, the elderly, so they might need to have their levels taken more frequently. And then ideally, we'll do this test first thing in the morning. So have them schedule this lab appointment for a morning appointment. Dealing with some of those side effects we talked about. So if they're experiencing tremors, we might need to administer certain medications. Um, we want to decrease stress. We want to tell them to not drink caffeine because that's going to make it worse. If they have polyuria, like we said, that's a big one that they have that frequent urination. Potassium sparing diuretics might be more ideal. And then increase in fluids. And then if they are developing symptoms of hypothyroidism, we need to assess for those symptoms. We might want to give Synthroid and we want to test thyroid function. So TS, T4, and thyroid stimulating hormones. The last thing I wanted to talk about in this video was lithium toxicity. Because it is so dangerous and something we always need to be on the watch for for patients taking this medication. So there's three different levels, starting with early, so hopefully this is when we catch it. Hopefully the patient's at home, they're starting to notice these symptoms and they call the doctor to get evaluated. So this is still when it's less than 1.5. Some symptoms they might have are those side effects we talked about, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, polyuria, fine tremors, and then maybe even slurred speech. As it gets worse, if it has higher levels, so this is 1.5 to 2, things like confusion, coarse tremors, so they're going to be a little bit more obvious, and poor coordination can occur. And then severe lithium toxicity, this one is deadly. So this is when we're only slightly higher, 2 to 2.5, and our patients can report tinnitus, which is like the ringing in the ears, seizures, twitching, um, they can go into a coma or even die. So what do we do about it? Well, first we need to get it out of the body. So if they're conscious and capable, we're going to give them something to make them throw up. If they can't do that, maybe gastric lavage, so kind of pump their stomach if you've ever heard of that. And then worst case scenario, we want to prepare them for hemodialysis because they cannot have these toxic levels of lithium in their body. So that was my video on lithium, a very big, very important medication in both pharmacology and your psych course. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.